Well, 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 you've made it to part three. Congratulations on your understanding of Rule Machine so far, or shame on you for skipping ahead. Today we're crossing the full conditional action Rubicon, so buckle your seatbelts and let's go. To review, a conditional action in Rule Machine is an if-then statement. The simple conditional action we used last time could only have one condition and one action to run. Today we will build conditional actions that can branch in multiple ways. Example, if condition A is true, do these things, otherwise if conditions B is true, do these other things, and if neither condition is true, well do these things. To demonstrate this, we are going to continue building off our same living room motion rule, which so far looks like this. Our trigger event is the living room motion sensor sensing motion. When that triggers, it runs our actions to run, which are to turn on the living room light 1. If it is between sunset and sunrise, turn on living room light 2 as well. Then wait for motion to stop and stay stopped for 8 minutes. Then turn off all the lights. So that rule has one simple conditional action. But now let's say instead of the lights being on simple switches, they are dimmable color temperature bulbs. Now that opens up a whole new world of possibilities for different lighting in different conditions. So for this rule, I'm going to set up different conditions where I want the lighting to be different. One in the evening from a little before sunset until everyone is in bed. I want the lights fairly bright and soft white. Two in the middle of the night when we are probably just trying to find our way to the kitchen for a midnight snack. You know, then we want the lights very dim and warm. Three in the early morning until sunrise when people are heading off to work and school. We want the lights a little brighter and cooler. And four, there's any other time during the day which we want the lights fairly neutral. Now, when we build this out in Rule Machine, we need to write them out as conditional if-then expressions that look like this. And once we flesh out the unique actions for each condition, the rule will look like this. Conditional actions always begin with an if and end with an end if. Consider those the slices of bread in your conditional sandwich. Now remember that Rule Machine evaluates everything top to bottom. And unlike a simple conditional action in our last video that could only trigger one unique action, each conditional expression can trigger a whole series of unique actions. So let's look at how that works with this rule. When our trigger event occurs, it will evaluate the first conditional if expression. If that expression is true, in this case, if it is between 25 minutes before sunset and 12.55 AM, then it will run these actions. This will also cause the rule to ignore all of the other else if and else actions inside your conditional action sandwich. If the first if expression is false, it will ignore those associated actions and continue down the table to the first else if expression. Again, if that expression is true, in this case, if it is between 12.55 and 5.22 AM, it will run the associated actions and ignore the other else if and else actions. You can have as many else if statements as you want and it will just go down the list until it finds one that is true. Each conditional action can also end with an else action. An else just represents any other condition not represented by else if conditions. A conditional rule does not have to have else actions. But an else is just kind of a catch-all for any condition you didn't define if you want to make sure the rule does something in all situations when it is triggered. So these are the actions in our completed conditional rule. Let's show you how we got here. Again, we're opening up our rule machine rule. We're going to keep our trigger event. It's still when either of our two living room motion sensors become active. So let's go into our actions and make some conditional magic happen. We're doing a lot of wholesale changes here, so instead of editing this action, we're going to delete it and start over with a clean slate. Now we'll start by creating a new action. Our action type is conditional action, and we want an if expression then action. We will define our expression element with a new condition. The capability for the action condition is between two times. The first time is sunset minus 25 minutes, ending at 12.55 a.m., and we're done with that condition. Now, we could really complicate things by adding multiple conditions to this expression, but we'll save that for our next video. We'll hit done with if expression then. Now that we have the beginning of our conditional action, these else and end if buttons have been added. Remember, we always want to end our conditional with an end if. But let's fill in the rest of our conditional sandwich first, so hit create new action. We want to set the color temperature for our lights, so select set dimmers and bulbs, set color temperature, We'll select our two living room lights and in the evening, which is the condition we're setting, we want a soft white of 3300 Kelvin and we want the lights to turn on at 80%. We'll set a fade, why not, and hit done. 
Notice that as the action is placed in the grid, it is indented. This helps indicate that it is part of a conditional action and will only fire if the if statement is true. So let's add our next action, which is to wait until motion stops. Remember, because we are waiting for a condition where both motion sensors are inactive, this is done with a wait expression. So select new condition, capability motion, select both living room sensors, toggle this to all of these, and select inactive here. We wait for this condition to exist for eight minutes, so select duration, and enter eight minutes. Then we are done with expression. You can see the expression here. It is going to wait for that expression to stay true for eight minutes, then move on to the next action. We have nothing to add to the expression, so hit done. And after the wait, of course, we want the lights to turn off, so add another action, control switches, select our bulbs, which yes, can be considered switches in this context, toggle this to off, and we're done with the action. So those are all of the actions we want for this condition. So if this condition is true, it will run these actions. But if it is not true, we want it to check for another condition. So hit add another action, then select conditional action type. And now, because we already have an if expression then in our rule, we see some new options here. We do not want another if expression then. That would nest a new conditional action inside of our conditional action, which we will discuss in a future video. Right now, we want an else if expression then. So else if what? Else if the time is between 12.55 and 5.22 a.m. is our next condition. So the capability for that is again between two times. These are specific times, so I'll fill those in here and we're done with the condition. We have nothing else to add, so we're done with the if then condition. Now we need to add the actions for the else if condition. Because they're similar to the previous actions, we can just copy those by checking the boxes, copying them to the clipboard, and then pasting them here. Notice again, they're indented to indicate they're part of this else if condition. So now we just need to edit the actions by selecting them. This is late at night, so we only want one bulb to turn on, so uncheck that. We'll have a very warm temperature at a very low level of 15, just enough to guide you through the room. Now we'll edit the weight to eliminate the delay. And we're done with that. Adding another else if is just rinse and repeat. So we'll zip through that in a second. But you've probably noticed this manage conditions box filling in with our conditional expressions as we built out our rule. When building a long complex rule, sometimes it's easier to create all of your conditions first and then select them as you build your rule. Our rule has one remaining condition. So I'll show you how you can pre-build it here and then select it when we build our next else if action. So click the box, select new condition, Again, it's between two times and we'll fill in the rest as before. When we hit done with condition, it gets added to our list of available conditions. It has no effect on anything until we use it in an action. You can also edit and delete conditions you don't want right here, but they're all fine. So hit done with conditions. Now, when we go to build our next conditional else if, when asked to define expression element, instead of selecting new condition, we can see a list right here and we can select the condition we already created. Now, no way of doing this is superior to the others. If you want to do a new action here, you could. If you like doing the actions in advance, you can do that too. It's just a different approach. With that, we're done with that else if conditional action. And now we'll quickly again, copy and paste these actions and add them for our morning condition. And when you do that, you'll see we have our three defined conditions with different actions for each. Now we could end our rule right here and just add an end if, which in that case, if motion was detected between any of these times, the lights would come on as indicated. But if motion was detected at any other time, nothing would happen. Now that would probably be great if you get a lot of sunshine, but if you don't, you might want to add an else action. So let's do that here. So we'll add an else by clicking here. Then again, we copy and paste some actions. We'll make some edits. So now when the rule is triggered and the conditions don't match any of the if or else if statements, it will trigger the else statement, which is to just turn on one light to a daylight color. And thus ends our conditional actions. So to close it out, we'll add an end if. And those are all the actions we want for our rule. Now, just because we put an end if here to bracket our conditional action does not mean we have to end the whole rule here. In our case, we have nothing else to add, but if we did add more actions here, they would just occur immediately after the conditional actions. But that's enough for now, so we're done with actions. And here's our final rule in all of its glory. Again, don't forget to hit update rule or done for the rule to take effect.
Thanks for sticking with us through part 3 of the Rule Machine tutorial. We've learned a lot, but there is still plenty more to learn to become fluent in Rule Machine. Play around with some conditional rules on your own, and don't forget we have detailed Rule Machine documentation at docs2.hubitat.com. Until next time, thanks for watching, and thanks for elevating your environment with Hubitat Elevation.